Alrighty, welcome to a special Big Lap Road Trip episode 107 of Top Was Ask Us Anything. As usual, it's been a pretty busy news week. Tesla has begun to eliminate the use of radar in its existing fleet with the rollout of software update version 2022.20.9. Several cars have been reported as converting to Tesla's pure vision system, although it is unknown at this stage if all cars in the fleet will do so. SpaceX is partnering with American mobile provider T-Mobile to bring data connectivity direct to standard mobile phones using much larger new generation Starlink satellites, expected to start launching next year. Shortly after this announcement was made, Elon Musk confirmed via Twitter that this service would be used by Tesla to provide premium connectivity for its fleet of cars. Official deliveries of the much-anticipated rear-wheel drive Model Y began last Saturday amid jubilant celebrations at the King Edward Road Delivery Centre. Approximately 20 Model Ys were delivered to eager owners who had ordered their cars as soon as the order page opened on the 10th of June. A pair of Tesla-owning idiots left Perth last Sunday on a simultaneous contraflow circumnavigation of Australia in their brand new rear-wheel drive Model Ys, unofficially delivered to them two days earlier on Friday. When asked the purpose of their crazy stunt, the middle-aged men replied, quote, Well, no one else has done something like that before, so we might as well give it a crack. And that was this week's news. <laughs> Brilliant. And yes, it was. So <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, work, yes, Aaron. welcome to the Odyssey. Apologies, I had to record that several times and, oh, yeah, anyway. Um, yes, so we got any questions? Oh, just confirm where you are and how long, how many k's um, you've done, etc. What day is it today? It's Wednesday, so I must be in Gundagai. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm in Gundagai uh, at Flash Jacks, I think it is, uh, actually plugged into a Porsche destination charger. Um, it's the only charger in town uh, because the, the Tesla supercharger is at Oliver's. It's about five, I think it's about five Ks out of town. And it was going to be simpler for me just to uh, plug in now rather than, yeah, I didn't have time, ran out of time. Um, and Pete's in, actually, who's got Pete? You've, you've, uh, Ken, you've got Pete on, on the phone so he can tell everyone where he is. to unmute myself and uh, I've got Pete on speaker across my across my desk so uh, do you want to tell us where you're up to Pete? Yes, so uh, my alarm is in the Fitzroy Crossing uh, earlier today after uh, starting uh, my journey uh, what, uh, at about four o'clock this morning um, so yeah, started um, uh, yeah did a, I think I can't even remember now it's been a long day as well uh, but yeah about 700 kilometres on uh, for the day. But about, uh, the Herald's a good thousand kilometres ahead of me. I'm at about 2,777k for the journey so far from Perth. Outstanding. So, so how far have you gone, Pete? So far to total, total, total? Uh, 2,777, I think. Okay. Oh, you can't quite. I've done. Oh, yeah. I can't yep. even read that. 3,000. Yeah, yeah. Nine, nine, five. Awesome. Okay. That was about my calculation before you came on. I was trying to work out the route to Gundagai, and I, I, I was a couple of k's short. But yeah, you're not not far from four thousand k's. Yes, I haven't actually I worked go, out. I think you go a couple of a couple of laps around the block just to get that extra five k's. I, I did. <laughs> See, if you went to the supercharger, you'd have been right. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's right. Um, I don't know what I did today. It it feels like twelve hundred k's, but because last time in my ex I went from um, Canberra to Melbourne to Keith. Today I went from Adelaide to Gundagai, which kind of feels similar. Because the next stop tomorrow, of course, will be Canberra, um, where I'll try and get a specky photo of the car uh, at the front of Parliament House and see whether the nice federal copper ladies will say, "What are you doing again?" And maybe recognise well, it won't be the car, but the idiot that's driving it. Um, alrighty, so we've got any other questions or whatever? I guess are, are there any general questions about Tesla's? Obviously, um, I mean, well, ha actually, hands up, who's got their Model Y? Oh, Andrew, John, Gareth, 
Well done. Congratulations. So how good are these cars? I mean, after 4,000 Ks, I can say that mine's doing all right. Cool. So how's the noise level in it now that you've driven uh, that long? Um, so, um, so, I, oh, yes, John. I actually picked mine today, this morning. <laughs> oh, congratulations. That's <laughs> awesome. That's, that's awesome. Um, look, on, on smooth tarmac, it's as quiet as a mouse. It really is. On the chip seal, it is a bit noisy, but it's it's no different to my Model X. And, mm. you know, in fact, I think it's actually quieter. And the ride, I mean, I've got my tyres pumped up to 49 PSI cold. And uh, going up the Hume Freeway, the, I think they were 51 PSI, which is fairly hard. Yeah. And the ride is great. I mean, people have been whinging about the harsh ride and suspension and all that sort of stuff, but I don't feel it. It's um, it's not a Mercedes, but it's it's it, it, how, it runs how, pretty well. How it's come cool. forty nine seems quite specific. Is there a logic to that? Uh, I just went one less than fifty, I guess. I well, actually, what I did was I set <laughs> I set the um the the compressor to fifty, but it sort of sags back. You know, it it goes to fifty one and a half or something, or fifty and a half, and then it sags back. And I thought, ah, oh, I'll just do forty nine or do. And um, I think the highest I saw was about 52, but it's been pretty cold. For, I mean, unlike Pete, for me on the Nullarbor, it was minus two uh, in the morning, which is pretty chilly. And oh. Pete, what, what about for you? You must be in your 30s. <laughs> the temperature, that is. <laughs> oh, sorry, pressure. Um, yeah, no, I got to 55 in the tyres today. So, yeah, and how, how hot was it? What, uh, what was the temperature roughly? Yeah, he said he said thirty nine forty degrees. Ah, oh, cool. Got yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, when I when I took my ex uh, through the territory, it was forty five degrees, and my tire pressures got up to fifty eight psi. But they started from fifty, so that's safe because that's the cold inflate is what counts. I, I think that was pretty much the same with us on the on the S going up to Broom. Um, yeah, we started at fifty and ended up at about yeah just under sixty. That yeah, sounds exactly. same with, with the S and the X. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a couple of things I've sort of discovered. I mean, all the wires now have Tesla Vision, uh, which means no radar. And of course, it looks like they might be retrofitting or removing the use of radars from even the older cars. One thing that's annoying is the car insists on having auto wipers on, which for me hasn't been a big problem, but it also insists on having uh, auto high beams. Which, I mean, if you look at the Bjorn Nyland videos, he carries on about it. And it is actually quite a pain. Um, the way I've done it as a pro tip is, you know how you use your right-hand stalk to, you do a double tap to in a, uh, to start autopilot. Well, then what I've become very adept at is to, you sort of do the blip, blip, and then you push the um, indicator stalk, which also has the high beam. So if you pull it towards you, it actually just flashes high beam. If you push it away from you, it engages it or disengages it. So what I do is I go blip, blip, and then on the high beam stalk or the indicator stalk, I push it forward at almost like sequentially so that most of the time the high beam doesn't come on, you know, oncoming traffic and all that sort of stuff at night. But unfortunately, every time you activate autopilot, it, it insists on having auto high beam, which is suboptimal to say the least. But we're all going to have to learn to deal with it because we're all going to get it. Yeah. So, um, what's the what's the longest longest haul you've done so far in the trip? Oh, it'll be today. Um, I just haven't. If Has someone's got green charges. Oh. Oh God, I don't remember. Um, they haven't actually been long. Pete's actually Pete's done by far the most with four hundred kilometres. Um, I think most of my stretches have been. 300 or so I, I can't remember you have to look at my tweets i'm afraid um it's sort of a bit of a blur um but pete's one from uh, broom to fitzroy crossing at is that 400 k's pete uh, yeah 398 so yeah and and that's a great warm-up that's a great warm-up to do the big one which is from uh three ways to camera wheel which is about 450 k's so that's that's the big one
that that really sorts the uh, the men from the boys or the um, yeah the the ladies from the girls. It really does. Six so, kilometers an hour for four hundred and fifty k's. No, no. Um, in my ex, I I did the first fifty kilometers at sixty k's an hour, and then just to get the runs on the board, and then get the did the next fifty kilometers at sixty five k's an hour, and then the next three hundred and seventy one kilometers at seventy k's an hour, and I made it with um, I don't know twenty kilometers left, so I could have burnt them, but I thought oh, I'll I'll just keep going at the steady space, uh, pace. Um, and I, I think the wires will be the same. I mean, one couple of things. One thing I'm slightly disappointed. Well, not disappointed. It's just a, it's just reality. Is Tesla's website say that the Model Y has a standard range has a has a range of 455 k's? Well, when you fully fill your car, it shows 435. And if you're on really chippy roads, uh, like you know, up north or or well over east. Uh, and you're doing 110, you're probably lucky to get 300-ish, a bit over 300 maybe. Um, you can get a lot more, but you just got to slow down a little bit. Um, and that's just a fact of life. It, although on the Hume Highway, I was banging out 110, but because the road's so smooth, I was getting 165 watt hours or something ridiculously good. Oh, nice. So it's, it's really the noise of the tyres that's just wasting so much energy which is a bit frustrating um and look obviously it goes about saying pete hasn't had this luxury yet but he's going to get it in a few days but the difference between what we have to put up with uh in the in the west compared to on the eastern seaboard um uh, last night i had my first supercharger uh session at claire but if you looked at my tweet i, I think i just tweeted out a photo of um showing me approaching the superchargers and you could see through the windscreen i'd stop the car and through windscreen you could see the the blurry superchargers but if you look at my mcu it shows that my battery had one percent left and that was really arduous because um i'd forgotten that that claire is 397 meters up in the air yeah. so of course you lose a lot of energy going uphill yeah. Um, the, the gom had no idea what was going on at first it would say oh, i'll arrive with two percent and then it said charging required blah 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 so I, I i did an extra charge at um port augusta but then um i wasn't confident i was going to make it to to claire so then i thought well where else can i charge and i, I remembered jamestown which is actually near where the uh, big battery is yeah. so i charged up there as much as i could and um you know like i said eventually rocked up at one percent and of course, it's because it takes so long to do AC charging that you have to always do this dance of getting there in a reasonable time, but having enough juice in your in your battery and and you're doing all these mental maths and whatever. Of course, as soon as I hit Claire, well, actually, say today, I left Adelaide and all I did was I navigated from Adelaide to Gundagai and I put the Mooney Ponds uh, supercharger as a added that to the trip, and it just bashes out every single supercharger. How long it's going to take? You know, the first stop was like ten minutes. You know, it's just it's so ridiculously easy that you know you just don't understand how good it is. It's a little bit like petrol cars with with petrol stations everywhere. When you've got fast DC charging, the range of the standard Y doesn't matter because there's a supercharger every two hundred k's, one hundred and fifty k's. So then, and it's so quick. I, I had, there's one place, I think it was, um, uh, anyway, I can't remember. It, it's a, it's a last stop before Melbourne. Um, uh, someone can look it up. Uh, basically Ballarat. it was so Ballarat. Ballarat. It was Ballarat. So Ballarat's actually not that far from Melbourne. So, um, I basically, what, what I did, what I always do is take a photo of my trip meter um look up on my phone where i on a map where i have to put the group the blue marker go out to the car do the texter take a photo of the bonnet take a photo of the car post it on plug share then do a tweet in the tweets like a copy and paste and i think i made a couple of mistakes where i sort of didn't do the, put the correct stuff in but anyway that took like 10 minutes because it takes some time to do that and then the supercharger my car was ready to go and it's like oh 
all oh, right, well, I was going to go to the shops, but oh, well, I just hopped back on the road. So there's no sense of it impinging on your road trip because you'd naturally want a little break and walk around or do something or eat something or drink something or whatever. And it's just, and, and they're, most of those superchargers are actually uh, 120 kilowatt. And because we've got the standard range cars, they've got the, the slower LFP batteries, but it still doesn't matter. So this, when people say, oh, you need to have 350 kilowatt charging and, you know, super duper fast charging, it's like, well, you don't. Because most road trips, you want to do something between, you know, legs. Um, but if you are driving like Pete is and like I was, well, then obviously range is king. But don't forget, by the end of next year, effectively, Synergy will have finished and Horizon Power will have finished their, their EV highway. And you'll have awesomeness from Eucla all the way up to Kununurra. And I mean, Pete, don't you wish you had those things there right now? <laughs> oh, Pete, Pete might, Pete might have fallen asleep. That's all good. Yep. That's right. Harold was talking about uh, using the DC chargers and whether you were uh, wishing it was next year when the WA government had installed the DC chargers up the coast. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, I mean, exactly, I mean, exactly what Harold has said. Um, it's just so true. I mean, uh, like, I haven't had the experience of the city chargers, but I've had the other experience. And, I mean, you know, just comparing it to kind of down the car out while going to Eden or, you know, it's, it's just, you know, like the slowest supercharger is 10 times faster than the fastest AC charger, at least. And I mean, a tenfold difference is, you know, 10 hours versus one hour. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a massive difference. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, bearing in mind that uh, we're, we're using CTEC 22 kilowatt, um, I'd call them slow DC chargers. And of course, we know Elon watches this program all the time. He's lurking as we speak in, a, in an unlisted um, login. Um, one of the pains, of course, is the car wants to heat the battery to accept fast DC charging. But of course, the CTEC only provides roughly 22 kilowatts of slow DC charging. So you can often lose about seven of those kilowatts just in the battery heater. And, and it dutifully will heat the battery until it gets to a, a bit over 40 degrees. And then you get the full flat out 22 kilowatts, which by the way, you get about 150 kilometers per hour of, of charge, which is actually pretty good. Yeah. It means that you can, um, at that rate, you don't have to slow down. You can basically just do the speed limit because you can replenish the energy faster than you can consume it, which is awesome when your battery is nice and warm. But um, so, so Pete probably has had less of that issue. I've had a lot of issues where the pack's cooled down to 20 degrees and it's got to heat up and waste energy. And actually, Pete, you had an interesting thing. Um, uh, I forget where you were, Pete. Um, I might have been, excuse me, <coughs> Pardu. Oh, apologies for like hearing coughs and stuff. I don't have my proper roadcaster you Butte console where I can just press a little red button and mute myself. So anyway, apologies for that. Um, but yeah, basically, um, uh, Pete plugged in the DC charger and it was really slow. Like he said, oh, it's only, I'm only getting, I think it was 80 Ks an hour or something charge. So I said, oh, look, just forget about that because the battery's cold. Just stick in the cons. Um, but Pete, I don't know if you can speak to this, but you were saying that it was actually faster for the DC charger. Oh, okay. That's okay. No, I, I can I can answer it for you if you like. So, so I was actually at the same time I was at um, Kimber Tire Repair, and they only had a twenty amp three phase supply, which is even worse. Um, and I was actually about to give up and just use the cons and and just get twenty amps. Oh, well, sorry, get eleven kilowatts, which is sixteen amps by three phase. But then Pete said something that was interesting. He he goes, well. When I had the cons in it, it said it was going to take three hours to charge, 
But with the DC charger, even though it was only getting 80 kilometres an hour, it actually said it would only take a minute and 50, uh, sorry, an hour and 50 minutes. So I then realised that obviously the car was smart enough to know how long it was going to take to warm up the battery and then it would stop heating it and then it would accept the full charge. So I actually then undid my cons, plugged back the, um, the CTEC. And yeah, sure enough, my car was the same. Rather than having to wait two hours or two and a half hours, I only had to wait an hour and a half. So you should really look at what your car's telling you when it's going to finish charging because um, it knows better. So if ever you use or borrow this uh, CTEC charger from the club, um, that's a little pro tip. Just because it looks slow at the start, it's the total duration that counts, not the pace at which it first started. But yeah, thanks for that, Pete, because you saved me, you probably saved me an hour that day, which was possibly, possibly yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that day was possibly yesterday, but it's kind of like, like this whole COVID thing. It's everything's just compressed and blurred into sort of, it feels like a month, but, um, hey, but yeah, hey, it was Pete. probably just yesterday. Hey, Pete, um, how's, hey, Pete, how's life on the moon? Is it all up there? Sound like you're walking on the moon, Pete. Is it going well over? So can you have to repeat your question? Honestly, honestly, I don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly right. The fact that we're using kind of nineteenth-century technology to communicate via telephone, you know, but uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Pete, do you know what your problem is? Oh, no. Apology, Pete. Do you know what your problem is with the internet? Is it just the internet's just too crappy to to um to use? Yes. So, so one thing I've noticed, I don't know about you, Pete, one thing that's a bit frustrating is um, on Saturday, the day before we left, because bearing in mind, we got our cars on the Friday. So we had, you know, in, in less than 44 hours, we were on the road, even less than that, actually. So um, I, I'd already obviously tested my Starlink dish in my Model X and everything worked with the inverter. It all worked perfectly. The Model Ys and all the new Model 3s have got a LiPo 12-volt battery rather than the lead-acid battery. Mm -hmm. And the issue with that is, and I had a multimeter with me, the the, the so-called 12 volts coming out of the, well, cigarette light or whatever you call it, power source thingy, um, is actually just over 15 volts. So when I plugged in my 300-watt pure sine wave inverter, it just had like this alarm beep as soon as you just plug it into the 12 volts without a load, it was just going into alarm. And I presume that's an over voltage alarm. So then I went to Ultronics and bought a different inverter and it <laughs> did the same thing. So then I ended up buying a gel cell big battery. Well, whatever, you know, like a motorbike battery. And I've got How an inverter just, sorry, go on. Harold, was that, I plugged mine into the, the, the uh, cigarette lighter in the boot today and I had it running all day no drama with a 300 watt um, inverter okay I might try I've got um, my boot ones being occupied by my fridge but I can swap that easy enough so I'll, I'll give that a try John um, just, just, I mean just out, out of interest um, I don't know if anyone can please bring up well, one of my tweets I've got a photo because uh, I've I just can't do that sort of stuff right now. But I did take a photo of the Starlink that is just like, yeah, sure. I just basically sandwiched it um, between the glass roof and the passenger seat yeah. headrest with just a bit of foam that I got from Jason's place. And we just sort of cut it and improvised. And, and I've actually got a bit of double-sided Velcro so that um, 
because oh, if anyone's got the photo, can anyone bring it up? Is that Here we yeah. go. It's coming. Yeah, awesome. Good work, Ken. Uh, <laughs> that fun. looks that looks backwards. Or oh, maybe that's awesome. just. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's, yeah. that's the photo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, that's reversed. Is that just my eyes? That that looks reversed no, to the, me. The, the the sign in the background is the right way around. So. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, my bad. Yeah. No. Oh, sorry. Yes. 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 So if you're looking to the right, that's the front of the car. Towards yeah. the left is the back of the car, and and you'll see that I um. Yeah, it's just a couple of pieces of foam and some other foam, and if you look on the corners carefully, you can actually see the like little black bits. So that's actually Velcro. So it was intended so that I could quickly take it out of the car. Um, now, obviously, all the shaft does is it rotates on its own axis, and then you can see just to the left of the shaft, there's like a bit of a cutout in the plastic. So it actually, that's how it changes angle. Yep, yeah, that's it, Ken. So, um, but I've never observed the shaft actually moving uh, left to right or up and down. It just rotates. It does about two or three rotations, and then you just get a message that says uh, the motors are jammed or or, or or not working but it still works fine and you can actually see the roof oh sorry can you, oh yeah 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 so go go to the second image sorry uh no the next one yeah yep yeah that one so this is where the car was parked obviously charging up and you can see that it's almost overhang hung by that steel roof so the car that the dish could only see probably about half the sky and yet i was still getting i forget what it was 100 and something megabits per second in um sorry where was that that was uh ballot no um mundrabilla Mund yeah mundrabilla huh. uh which Mund in fact it's it's I right where that the, the blue line ends on that map because that's that's where i was um mundrabilla hey harold we were, <laughs> we were admiring your um his royal majesty number plates <laughs> oh yes oh look i've got to get a big shout out to um to the Tesla team, I mean, they were just like James, um, Harry and Alex, they were just awesome. And well, I've actually got a photo, I, I can't show it right this minute, but I will in another episode. And um, I had a choice of either 420 or 69. And then I thought, oh, I, I might take the, the 069 because I'm born in 1969. And then Pete was going to get the other one, so we could have 420.69. And then James rings me back and goes, oh, actually, we've got HRM 420. I go, well, that's my initials, so um, I've got to have that. So now I'm doomed to carry those plates forever because I'll never, ever in my life, well, you can't, unless, until there's a two in front, and I don't know if when that'll be. That'll be like in decades' time. Oh, there you go. Um, How would you get that? Is that from Pete? Cool. You said um, it to Oh, sorry. Yes, I did. Yeah, thanks, Ken. So, so we've got we've got four twenty point six nine, and I mean, that's just a perfect image, and and that was basically the I guess you could call it the 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 dress rehearsal for the grand deliveries the next day. So, um, you know, that that was awesome. Yeah, and that was on the Friday, and forty eight less than forty eight hours later, we were on the road uh, with our cars chockers full of stuff. And we're still on the road. And next episode, actually next week, we're going to probably have a casual meetup, but I might leave that to others to work out whether we do a casual meetup or another, ask us anything. But I think a casual meetup is probably a good idea. It's it's on a Wednesday, uh, so it'd be a nighttime one. Um, so, yeah. So, um, Charles, welcome to the uh, – pro. well, welcome to the same time zone. So you, you're, you're, not, you're not quite as tired as I am. But um... <laughs> that's right. We've got we've got a few East Coasters on tonight. Um, so we got we got Phil and uh, and um, and Dimitri and Charles all on from the Eastern Seaboard. Ah, and cool. Rob. Welcome. We had Rob as well. Of course, ah, cool. Rob is on the Eastern Seaboard, but he hasn't said anything yet. No, no, he's just lurking to make sure I don't mess this. <laughs> Um, actually, one thing that was really interesting, it's just a, such a small world, is I was driving up the Hume Freeway, as, I, as I'm as i doing, and um, I went to, to take the turn off to Euroa a Supercharger, and there was a car behind me, and I didn't really think anything of it. It wasn't a Tesla, it was just some other random ice car. 
and it's a bit of a long stretch. You sort of there's a bit of a bypass uh, to get in to get to Euroa, and um, anyway, I sort of plugged in because that's the first thing I got to do. And this guy comes up to me, goes, "I've been following you on Twitter," and I go, "What?" And he goes, "Yeah, my name's Matt, and I've been following you and Pete, and you know it's awesome what you guys are doing and stuff." And and he goes, "I never thought I'd see your car here." And he was just driving. He was driving from Melbourne back to Aubrey. And he, he saw my car and he goes, oh, geez, you were hammering it. I was doing like 119. And I go, no, your speedo's wrong, mate, because I was doing effectively 111, um, which is the, the speed limit's 110, yeah. sorry. Um, and I tell you what's really trippy is that like all the trucks do 110, like the semi-trailers, they just do 110. They, they don't have like the speed limit of 100. They just bash out 110. It's, um, it's amazing. But yeah, small world. That guy's Matt, so I, I did a, I gave him a shout out uh, on the on the tweet when I got to Euroa, well, the tweet that I sent from Euroa. So it's a small world. So yeah, Matt Matt's got a Model Y. I think it's coming in September or October. Although I guess it's probably going to be October, isn't it? Because all the deliveries will be sent out in September. Um, if I actually, um, Chuck, have you got any info? I mean, that's obviously broadly published of I think there's more ships coming there's just more deliveries just hand over fist oh I think I think I saw something from better on Twitter about um there have been seven ships this quarter so far something like that yeah um, seven ships is correct yeah. well, well uh, I heard yeah, oh, yeah, so go, go Charles oh sorry and they're offloading in like directly to, to other cities obviously they're doing free, free, uh, free metal but uh, other cities are getting direct great ships as well so yeah, they're, they're up in their logistics, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I uh, bumped into uh, someone who's who know who who is related to someone who works for Tesla, and he basically in Moody Ponds, and he basically said that I think there were two and a half thousand deliveries to Melbourne. Now I don't know if that was wise or or threes and wise, but that's still a lot of cars. Um, so yeah, it's awesome. I mean, obviously, Robin Denholm said, you know, in in June or July, that she doesn't, she wouldn't be surprised if the twenty six thousand five hundred Tesla fleet doubled by the end of the year. So that's a lot of cars. Um, mm. We've got what seven hundred and fifty odd uh, that came into Perth uh, this quarter. Uh, so we really need to get a, a move on and get maybe fifteen hundred next quarter. On a big push, perhaps. I think someone was saying it might have been one of the driven articles was saying that it hit ten thousand this quarter. But yes, I think I, th I think Veda said it's probably a bit a bit optimistic, but who um, you knows? I actually optimistic. heard that from another source as well, okay. um, a source closer to Tesla that 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 mentioned the ten thousand number. So yeah, maybe that is. I don't know. Might be another ship that Veda doesn't Veda doesn't know about yet. Nice. That, well, he didn't know about the Ruby Ace that went to Frio until about two days before it arrived, I think. Yeah. He became aware of it. So um, these things happen. Yeah. Um, all righty. Well, enough about uh, us characters. Uh, any any normal tester questions um, or comments or anything? Um, I think it's important to recognise um, some sponsors, Harold, tonight. Uh, the Holiday Inn where you're staying, the Honeymoon Suite. The bondage room, I believe it is, behind me. There's some whips and stuff on the wall. Um, I think there's uh, definitely worth mentioning. Uh, look at that. Look at that decor. Where'd they get that from? The 1980s. Rich, I think Richard Cooper designed that room. That's one of his uh, mods. I can see it. There he is. That's when he was a hippie and he got the two fingers. Yeah, that's it. Great work. Yeah, it's very nice abode. Cool. And is that that's uh, two ashtrays? Is it Harold? It's not stars ashtray level. Look at that. That's fantastic. Is it actually it's, beige, or is that your white balance? A, a Harold, it must be exciting to stay on the set of the Sullivans. <laughs> just, that's just great. Actually, be staying on the set of the Sullivans. That's great. So, yeah, there you go. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, Look on the back of the door. Right. 
anyway. So, so Harold, just just back to your why. Are you are you driving at the speed limit most of the time, or are you you going conservative? Oh. You've muted yourself, You're Harold. Muted, Harold. I'll answer for you. Yeah, My so, client has so, no comment at the moment. No, uh, no, no, no. no. So at this stage, no, I've never exceeded the speed limit. Um, now, obviously, on the AC, there were sections where I had to slow down to get to make it. So on the way to Clare, I had to slow down out of Port Augusta. I was doing like 80 k's an hour, and it was just, yeah, not, not that great. Um, on the Nullarbor sections, uh, I forget I forget which towns they were, but uh, when it was minus two, I sort of slowed down to about 100 just to get a bit extra economy. Um, but most of the times I was doing close to the speed limit, pretty much, because with the with the SeaTac, it's it's okay. Oh, it's when I had um, uh, approaching Port Augusta where there were no there was no way of actually um, charging on the SeaTac because they were destination charges and I couldn't couldn't use the SeaTac for it. So then I'd slow down, but generally doing the speed limit, John, um, most places. And of course now on on superchargers, that's all you do. You don't. You don't. I've I, I built a, my own little app, and I've I've lent that to, well, given it to Pete as well. That gives you like a, a a flight, like a glide slope. It basically looks at how much how many kilowatt hours you got in your battery, how many k's you got to go, and it just divides one into the other and says you have to average, you know, 160 watt hours per kilometer, and it oh. just represents it like a dotted line. And if you, as long as you keep the dotted line between below the solid line, it means you're putting money in the bank. So you actually. You have less charge in reserve, um, but you know when you're on superchargers, it doesn't matter. You turn your apps off. You don't even look at what your state of charge is or what your range is because you know the the car's sorting it out. But yeah, basically, John, it's all at um, normal normal uh, highway speed, so 110. Oh. Yeah. So um, just just for general planning, though, 300 to 350. Case with all things. Uh, okay, so if you're doing 110, it'll be closer to the 300 ish mark. Wow. So there were a couple of places where it was the interval was longer than 300, so I had to slow down a bit to make it. Wow. If you know, but I forget which ones they are because it's all a blur at the moment. But I'll piece it all together. But if you're um, driving, if you're driving at 100, then you should be able to get 350 out of it. Yeah, mostly yes, I think so. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check. Um, because I've got images of all the all the trip meters and stuff. Um, yeah, notwithstanding, that would also have to be on the flat without a headwind. Yeah, just, oh, yes, just, yes. just nominal, just nominal, you know, yeah, flat, flat yeah. road, no headwind like that, but you know, yeah, yeah. 300 yeah. to 350 at 100 k's an hour. Yes, yeah, that's right. Of course, John, because you're asking for Jurgen, are you asking for Jurgen or for you? Nah, for me, because oh, I'm, yes, I'm right. going to. I've got to drive this thing across as well. Yeah. So I've got to start doing some planning. So are you going to have the SeaTac in your car, John? Uh, I wasn't planning to. I was planning to just take the 11 kilowatts. So um, Yeah, that's going to be a bit painful for you if you do that because it's just so slow. You know, okay. and that's the... Pete was going, to, was going to chime in. Go, Pete. Oh, uh, John, I was just going to say on today's drive, so tell us, 390... Five or no, that lost kilometers cost four hundred. It was a slide headwind, uh, fifty-nine degree temperature, um, and on average, uh, just under seventy-five k to make that, and I got to seven percent. Okay, that's an awesome graph. There is that is that from stats up, Pete, from your tweet. Yeah. So what app was that from? So that was from Broom. That's from Broom to Victoria Crossing. Yeah, yeah. So, so sorry, what, what what application generated those statistics? Oh, uh, Tesla. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. So 90K is at low efficiency. So if you just flick it back, yeah, so... High efficiency, medium, yeah, right. And 80, 80 something Ks extra range generated. That's kind of cool. Cool. Yeah, that is. 
How much did that cost, uh, Pete? The app. Uh, I've been into subscription now. Uh, it's not true. Um, uh, I completely forgot I had it. Um, I've, been, I've been getting charged for it and not even using it. Uh, but I've dug it up, obviously. Because someone asked me on Twitter about the average speed. And then uh, so I thought, oh, yeah, I've got an app for that. I wonder if I've still got it. And I'm sure enough, I was able to dig it out. But, yeah, I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something. Like that. It's not true. Yeah, right. Still pretty cool though. Um, does it does it have to does it rely on um, telemetry continuous? To, I guess it does. It's got to basically extract the, the details as they occur over the yeah using the Tesla API, I presume. Yeah, you break up. Only got like every third week. So, so that's right. I'll. You don't. You don't need any. You don't need to leave the app running or anything. It it, it, it pulls the data from the Tesla back end. I assume is what we're asking. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So you, 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 you can actually go back. I can go back two, three weeks, you know, and uh, have a look at my drive and my charging history. Uh, it looks at all. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's pretty is good. It, are you keeping all the statistics, Harold? Like. Have you worked out what the best dim sim is, where to get them from? I don't know. I actually uh, today um, I'm like I'm Surely. on like a keto. No, I'm on a keto diet today. Um, I had I had two wheat bix and a tetra pack of UHT milk for breakfast. It was yummy, and I didn't have time when I was at um, Ballarat. I was going to get the bite to eat, but I only had ten minutes. And once I tweeted and plug shared, that was it. It was time to go. So. You know, you know yes. Roadhouse, Roadhouse Keto, which is all cheese sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, that uh, sounds very good for your bowel movement, Harold. That's good. Very, very important well, the bowel it would be it, it, it would be impolite of me. Well, I what bowel? Well, all I can say to that, Jared, is what bowel movement. So, uh... <laughs> if we can get a if we can get a graph on that later on and some weight, that'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, well, the graph is a, is a, the graph is like a, a, a straight line, mate. It's just there is no bowel. <laughs> anyway, that's just far too much information. And ask us anything. Harold. I mean, it it is called ask us anything, but uh, it is. Harold. Yes, John. Go, John. How do you feel like you you're you've got a Model X driving a Model X? How does just the comparison in sitting in the Y? How how does it? How do you oh. compare it? So. I noticed that the seats aren't as as wide because they're basically wow. Model Three seats, but wow. it actually feels really good. Um, you sort of feel more cupped in the seat, so you're like more hugged. Or I don't know how you describe it. It's really soft, you know, the the fake leather or whatever the plastic seats. Um, look, I think it's more comfortable than my X. I, I mean, to be honest, I haven't actually gone from one to the other straight away, like because. I took my X to work to store it when I got the Y. So um, I haven't done the full side by side, but the the Y seat, it's a Model 3 seat, but it's higher up. It's bolstered by, I don't know, um, 20 centimetres or, or, well, yeah, maybe something like that, or 15, 18 centimetres. It's super comfortable setting position. Wow. Um, one thing I noticed is the steering wheel is quite small compared to my X's wow. when it had a steering wheel or even the, the yoke that it's got. Um, but that's pretty cool because it's sort of more sporty, you know? Um, and look, let's face it, you don't use a steering wheel much when you're on autopilot. So apart from just holding your hand, you know, just, you know, so the car knows you're there. Um, but yeah, seats are great. The suspension, like I said before, people whinged about it, hard suspension, it's not hard. And oh yeah, I mean, I've been on some crappy, crappy sections of road, um, which Pete's gonna get to. And even like the Hume Highway has got really cratered bits and stuff, um, and the Air Highway, where the when it rained a lot, it just cratered all the road, and and the cars performed really well. It's quite comfortable considering what it's going over. Okay. Um, and that's with hard tyres. And, and mind you, I've popped my tyres up to forty nine cold. So most people, I think, the recommendation is forty five off the top of my head, or forty six. Forty six. Yeah. Right. Cool. Harold, I was on the human highway a couple of weeks ago and I thought, good, goodness me, you couldn't run this in autopilot because you're just dodging the potholes all the time. Did you have to do that? No, I just run over them. It's a tester, it can take it. 
and I went. I've, I've hit all the potholes. Yeah, there's tons of them. It's pretty bad. Um, except for in South, when I crossed over to Aubrey, of course you got. They've got concrete. I think it's is it concrete, Richard? It felt like concrete, but yeah, but concrete. unlike, but but unlike uh, Queensland, we know where you got between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. They've got the the old fashioned concrete where you got the expansion joints every whatever distance and. You hear this badum 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 badum, and it's really annoying. Or even worse, it's like dum 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 dum. You know, and it just does your head in. Um, the Hume uh, highways is like dead smooth, where that's concrete. But yeah, the bitumen sections are all being crated, and I actually saw there's a there's a road team where they've got like the hot mix, and they were like shoving it in the general direction of the pothole, and then they'd like withdraw, and this truck. This road train would just run over it. I guess they were using that to compact it. It was quite strange, I thought. But anyway, they were just like chucking it. Then a couple of trucks would go over, and well, then of course I was driving the other direction, so I, you know, I lost sight of it. But that's how they seem to fix potholes: is just chuck a couple of shovels at in its general direction. But anyway, Harold, yes, uh, Nigel. Chris wants to know: Have you and Pete been using autopilot for most of the drive? Only. Only, only autopilot. Oh, there was there was that hitchhiker Harold that grabbed the wheel for a while. <laughs> oh, that we won't include that. Sorry. <laughs> Keep that hitchhiker out of it. Um, yeah, um, I'm three thousand kilometres from you, Jared, and you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> Harold, Harold, good day. Harold, are you going through Sydney or are you going to bypass? Oh yes. Oh no 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 absolutely so so my next stop is Canberra, and then Sydney, well then Brisbane, Darwin, and back to Perth. So uh, you're going to stop Brent. in you're going to stop in Sydney anywhere or yeah at the supercharger. So I haven't picked which one. Oh. Um, so yeah, I'm only going to stop at the supercharger, charge up, and then keep going. So you know, it's not a sightseeing tour. It's it's just a, a doing a doing a lap basically i mean and in all honesty i mean i've taken all of the uh the big banana the big pineapple the big koala in fact i went past the big koala that was in south australia somewhere i forget now um i'm obliged i'm obliged to suggest that you go to an amp charge charger in sydney (laughs) 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 no only if it's uh, only if it's on the route oh it's probably not um i've got to pick I know St. Leonard's is no long. No, was it St. Leonard's was a supercharger? Yeah, that was the original gone. showroom. That's gone. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, I mean, the reason why I picked Mooney Ponds uh, as opposed to Richmond, because I have been to Richmond, is Richmond's deep in the city. And mm-hmm. when I when I did my route planning or when the car said, you know, whatever, um, it said I was going to get to Gundagai at like uh, quarter to 10. And that would have been too late. So then I thought, oh, I'll, I'll try Moody Ponds. And that was like half an hour quicker. So it was cool. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm not sure. I, I did use the amp charge in Perth, John, in my Y. Oh, so that was, on, that was on that was on Saturday morning. Oh, awesome. I, did a, I did a test charge. And, okay. of course, I, I got there and there was a bloody Model 3 there. Uh, this, oh. this was early. This was um, 6 o'clock. In the morning, was it Joseph. Did you take no, a picture? Did you take yeah, a picture? I did. Yeah, I have got a picture of the two side by side. Um, yes. Send it to us oh, or something. Yeah, yeah. I'll see if I can. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I can't do later. it right now because my my setup. I'll show you my basic. My setup is just a laptop. I've got the stream deck, which I can do a few things with, but just a laptop and nothing else. So I'm just bereft of technology. That's so I've got raw. A That's of raw. That's coming it's, live. Yeah, it's unplugged. It's it's very unplugged. much unplugged. Unplugged um, and coming straight from Pakistan. So I can't do screen shares, and I can't do well. I, well, I could, but it'd be yeah. I wouldn't even know what I was sharing. So anyway, That's um, cool. it's it, you got to rough it on the road. Um, um, but yeah, I'll get you yeah. those photos. Yes. So, uh, the, yes, the, Philip. Uh, so, so, so Philip, you're going to say something? Yeah. Uh, Macquarie Centre in um, Sydney's got 10 superchargers there, so that might be an option that's sort of out of the city slightly. Um, yeah, cool. 
Uh, I'm from Cairns. I'm just down here in Sydney at the moment. I just sort of, uh, as a suggestion, when you're looking, uh, when you get past Gympie and you're going north to go up to um, Townsville before you go across, um, some of the Charge Fox charges, um, uh, the Charge Fox charges, you know, up there, have got a 50 kilowatt and then they've got the, the two um, uh, AC uh, charges there, sort of like Schneiders. emergency stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, when you look at the app, you'll see that, oh, yeah, you know, that you've got the symbol there and you think, oh, yeah, it's all okay. But I'll just go into the app for the next yes. one to, to make sure that it, it isn't, the DC charger isn't broken and you've just sort of stopped, you know, and you've got an AC charge for that little bit. Yeah, also, that's a, I can, sorry, also up in Townsville, um, they've got an EV uh, 350 kilowatt charger there at the Puma uh, station, so that, yep. that might be worth just stopping at. It'll be your last I actually, one. I, 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 yeah, I, I eyed that one off, and that'll be Pete's first one. Um, I, I actually eyed that off. Frustratingly, I noticed that that uh, Charge Fox or whoever it is, uh, the Queensland government, have got one in Longreach, but we're not going that way. We're going across the Townsville. So I was secretly hoping that, well, if they've opened Longreach, they might have opened a couple of other stations uh, before we get there, but it'll I've, probably I've be just that, a few to go yeah, for uh, Kingaroy is, uh, is opened as part, as part of this Western network that's going to sort of go around. But I've heard um, that St George is going to open this week, but that's sort of way out of your way as well. So it's really, um, it, it seems to be that the councils have got the, in my opinion, the councils that have got their act together because it's sort of a partnership between Queensland government, the council, RACQ, um, and Charge Fox. Um, yeah. So the councils have got their act together and have done the work to actually say, well, this is where we want the charger. And, um, you know, we've poured the slab and we've run the, the cable to it are the ones that are getting it first. So Longreach, you know, obviously got, yeah. got their act together and, you know, they were sort of in there. So it's, it's going to be quite random um the placement but you know as you were saying in 12 months time well once you get to um mount isa you'll be fine to go to townsall um or yep. go down the inland route really easily i just did a route uh, uh, uh an inland sort of way um on the way down here and um once i hit new south wales you know the nrma charges were fantastic in the in the west so is something to look forward to once you get it over there in West Australia. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, and it's literally, I mean, Synergy's website says January 2024, but I mean, that's effectively the end of next year. You know, it'll be all but complete. 2024. <laughs> um, yes. I mean, yes, that's right. 2024. Um, but that's only the end of next year, effectively. And obviously, South Australia, Chuck, they're, they're, have they got any... Um, Completion timeframes at all for that for their uh, setup? Is it is it next year or something? I think it's pretty similar to Western Australia. They're going similar sort of size and, and the same, same kind of time frame. Longer. Than and then Queens and then Queensland will be what probably by the end of this year perhaps or or early ish next year. So the only next thing that's going to be missing is the Northern Territory, mm -hmm. which obviously is going to wait for the federal funds which have been committed. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, then you will be able to do this big lap. I wouldn't say in luxury because, I mean, to be honest, 50 kilowatts, I mean, it's compared to Ooh. AC is just awesome. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it'll be nice if it was a little bit bigger. The, the new ones that are going in out west are 75. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit more, but it's still not, you know, it's not supercharger. But um, compared to uh, 11 kilowatts um, AC charging, it's, it's a dream. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, any any charging session that takes less than half an hour is just luxurious. Um, it, you know, as opposed to three hours or four hours, you know, um, it really is luxurious. Actually, Harold, and, just on, what, what, what is, um, what's the peak charging speed you've seen on, the, on your Y? Um, it was only on a... Oh, actually, it was. I did have a, a version three supercharger that was at um, Horsham, but it was no faster. I think I saw oh, 138 kilowatts okay. from Look, that. Oh, yeah. I wasn't super flat. I know the LFP. 138. 
do charge slower. Yeah, look, the, yes, LF, well, the LFP is in general is slower, but I did see charging speeds of eight. It was in the high eight hundreds, so let's call it just nearly nine hundred k's an hour. Mm. And and the thing is, that's just so fast. Um, yeah, it's it. And at the time, the fans were spooling up, and it just sounded like I was flying in a jet at <laughs> jet speed because it was literally the same speed as a jet, um, which is just it's just awesome. Um, yeah, so roughly 800, I think it was 889 kilometres an hour was the fastest I sort of saw. But to be honest, I wasn't looking much because I was mm -hmm. tweeting and doing other things. So, and, and it's just so fast because cause they're all placed, you know, 150 k's apart. You put in that 150 k's in 10 minutes, mm. you know, and that's all you got to do or 15 minutes. Yeah. And then you're on to the next one and the next one. So, so Philip, what I'm going to plan to do in Queensland, and this is for Pete's benefit too, is... Uh, because a lot of them are broken or not working, and apart from drilling through the app to check what is actually working, there's also a chance that because there's only one DC charger in many of those locations, and it's only a trid single tritium, uh, 50 kilowatt, is I'll just go to the, f the first charger that's along, and if it's available, I'll use it, and then go to the next one. If that's not available, I'll go to the next one. So you sort of leapfrog over. So never go past a charger that's working. If you know what I mean, so so that way you put more money in the bank, and that way you can skip charges further down the track. Because you don't want to get to a charger where, and this is this is something that Rob actually mentioned a few, uh, well, I was going to say a few days ago, maybe it was yesterday, where he mentioned that um, you know you could always come across someone, well, in an LFP car that is militantly charging up to a hundred percent. You know they've arrived with twenty percent and they're going to just charge to a hundred, even though they don't need to. But if you're paying for a service, it's they're entitled to stay there until they're fully charged. Unfortunately, you know. Um, but anyway, that's something that uh, you know. Hopefully, the community will be able to deal with. Well, I guess you can't really. Yeah. Um, you know, name, name and shame them, Harold. Uh, Richard Richard Cooper is one of them. Uh, Nigel's one of them. Uh, uh, there's a whole list of them. Chapman's in there. He's, he's one of those ones. Yeah, he knows it. He's, he's got that bike. Takes one. Uh, John Edwards. What? I've got a question for John Edwards. Uh, John Edwards. Yeah. I need your new charger, the uh, Ampol Blue charger in my suburb, my local suburb of Belmont. Oh, which is cool. Becoming more, which is becoming more efficient. I used it just after Nigel was there. Sucking the guts out of it because it was free. He drove from Albany to get a free <laughs> charge. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was just, I was actually there because Joe's husband, Seth, was there and um, he showed me how to use it, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, only, only little complaint that I've got um, when the hailstorm kicked in, I was getting wet while I was plugging in. Yeah. You know, I used to have a little, a little bit of a roof over that. I mean, all the ice cars had roofs <laughs> over them while they were filling up. Um, but yeah, I went in and I bought an ice cream, which cost me five dollars, yeah. and a can of coke, which cost me eleven fifty, and a paper, which was thirteen dollars. <laughs> so I worked out with about thirty five dollars, but I did get a free charge, so I was pretty happy. Yeah, uh, no, good. So I did support them, and I was very impressed by the color scheme. Uh, which, you know, it's very nice, <laughs> uh, and it was not. But they could, yeah, could just use a roof, a nice yeah. little bit of. You, know, Jared. you need sure. to go to the in winter. Uh, the Ampol in uh, in Melbourne in Altona North. That's got little roofs over the little charges. Yeah, we're, we're in Perth. Uh, it takes a while for us to get things over here, so well, it no, didn't, we'll, didn't take Harold we'll, very long. Well, yeah, well, Harold's different. He's yeah. Well, uh, didn't take things. Harold long. What's your excuse? Happy. If Harold wasn't, if Harold was here in Perth, we'd have a roof knocked up. He would have been down to Bunnings already, <laughs> whacking the roof up already. Jared, so. Jared just just wearing a Cobra, mate. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, Joe's husband Seth, uh, he said, yeah, we could use a roof here. Uh, right, he yeah. saw Nigel too earlier, but yeah, uh, when, yeah, um, I was pretty impressed by that charger. Yeah. I went there about midday on the Saturday. When I pulled up, there was already another Tesla Model Three charging. He was just finishing, so he unplugged and I plugged in. Then another Model Three um, came along within two minutes to have a look. And while I was talking to him, another Model 3 drove in, had a look and go, oh, there's two cars there, and drove off. That guy drove off. Then Seb drove in. 
and yeah. parked and I am but I was only charging for about 10 minutes um and I plugged him in and I left um and then you obviously came along for your 35 dollar free charge Jared yeah yeah I just wanted to <laughs> you know, you place that yeah actually I was actually for Harold because you weren't on earlier you weren't on earlier right but we did the opening there um yesterday oh oh fantastic awesome yeah, and and channel 10 showed up and uh western australian showed uh, showed up anyway yep. channel 10 interviewed me and interviewed buddy jürgen and was filming the car and all that and it was awesome and we thought oh this will be great we'll get a good really good you know story out of this and then some snoozer turned up in a in a in a volvo electric volvo pulled up and plugged in and they started talking to him and this and that. Anyway, if you scroll back in the chat, I've sent the link of the Channel 10 story. They, they didn't put any of the car, didn't put any of our car, didn't talk about the rally, didn't yeah. talk about fuck all. Um, yeah. It was all about the Volvo. Yeah, so with the Cuba hat. I reckon the Cuba hat would have been on the Volvo. Yeah. Definitely so, Ant. Like so it. have a look at that. But anyway, it was, it was good. It gave Ant charge a bit of press and... And it was a story about EVs and charging, so it was it was it was it was good. It just wasn't about us. That's all. That's it. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's, got, it's done well for Belmont. It certainly put us on the map. Uh, <laughs> we're known as this, you know the stolen car drive-through center. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's um it's good now. So very impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll I'll bring it to their attention, Jared. I'll. I'll uh, oh, I just I'll, think in the I'll, winter months when the snow's thicking in pretty hard. A little gazebo over the top would be great. Yeah, all right. Sure. Um, <laughs> no, you mean dandruff, Jared? Oh, this is just you know, just a little bit of you know something to protect me from the from the weather, you know. So they really you know, want you to go inside and spend some more money on their coffee and the, and that juice and sit. You can sit in what there. A, what it what yeah. it actually what it actually needs is to be a dual CCS charger and get rid of that Correct. channel, mate. And uh, because- Absolutely agree, yeah. You know, right. if it's 150 kilowatts and there was two CCS getting 70, 75 each, that would be awesome. Oh, anyway. who's that? Uh, John, 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 John. What about us leaving? Oh, there we go, there we go. There's a bulb <laughs> there's, a, there's a 10 amp, there's a 10 amp PowerPoint around the back with the where the ice machine is. You can plug into that. <laughs> right, and, and that's and that's all the leaf's gonna get anyway, even from yeah, that's, so, that's yeah. all it can take. <laughs> <laughs> just, a bit, just a quick question about your 22 kilowatt charger that you've got with you. Can yep. you use that with type two as well as uh 32 amp three phase? Uh, frustratingly, I did actually make up, uh, well, I got, um, a guy that works for me to make one up and it's, it uses what's called the fast initiation sequence, which is you just use one switch yes. and it works on my EVSE. So I tested it at work on my, on the EVSE that I, I make myself and that works, worked perfectly. And then I tried it on a destination charger, which I knew was compatible with other um, uh, EVs and it didn't work. And then I tried it on an EO charger. I forget where that was now, but it didn't work either. So um, there is another version that has two switches and you sort of like, you plug it in, you flick one switch and that sort of tells the EVSE that a car is sort of connected. And then you flick another switch to say, start charge. So frustratingly, I don't have tools and anything any ability to, to make any changes to the rig i've made but i actually lent the same thing to pete so unfortunately pete i don't think it's going to work um but the idea was basically yeah you go to a 22 kilowatt evse and then you can suck the full 22 kilowatts and then turn it into dc which which obviously when i get back to perth i will fix that and test it it's just that we, we sort of planned this trip, uh, well, we sort of been talking about it for a, for a couple of months and then it sort of started to heat up when the wires were finally coming. But of course, everything just rushes towards you and you sort of test as much as you can. So, so like just the same as uh, with the Starlink thing, um, mine doesn't work that well. Although when it's running, I mean, yeah, you know, there's nothing, there's just nothing better just driving down the highway in the middle of nowhere getting 200 megabits per second, you know. It's kind of like civilization, but 
yeah, in my case, it doesn't quite work properly on the inverter. But um, yeah, so 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 I, I forget who asked me that. Was that Philip? Um, yeah, the the Type Two thing it does work. It just doesn't work the way I made it. But we'll get to that uh, in the fullness of time when I'm when I'm there. Hopefully before the next Ask Us Anything, which will be Wednesday week, because uh, I think. Well, what do you reckon, Ken? We're going to have a casual meetup next Wednesday. Yeah, I think that makes a good plan. Yeah, I think it yeah, makes a good plan. Happy, yeah, happy I, think, I, think, I actually, yeah. I believe it's Ken, Ken's house. Uh, we're just going to have a casual meetup at Ken's house and surprise him. We'll just all go to Ken's house and we come home from work. We're all there. Hey, yeah, that's a great idea, Ken. Bring, bring you can surprise you. now. Yeah, and bring your own beers and actually, you can use my HPWC. No worries. <laughs> but, but but serious but seriously, um, we'll we'll rustle up an address that's probably better than my house. And, uh, and yes, we'll, we will. Yeah. Actually, just just I was just having a thought about that Chatamo. Is there is there still any still many Teslas running around with um, still using the Tesla um, plug? Yeah, only S's and X's, only, John, yeah. because they're there the only ones that have. There's many of them around yeah. that don't have the CCS adapter. Oh. Uh, oh yes, there will be. There'll be some cars maybe that people haven't bothered. Although I think there's not that many to be honest, right. and they they can use Chatamo. Um, I mean, Rob Dean, for instance, he was using the CCS adapter, but he left right. it at Belladonia, so I grabbed it and then took it to Majura Pass. But right. he was using the Chatamo adapter for all of the uh, CCS. Uh, I've still got a Chatamo adapter. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll, I'll just. I was just wondering because there's a couple of spare ones, Ken, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but they're useless. Maybe... But they're but they're useless, John, because unless you've got an old S or an old X. No, nah, but I'll, like... what, what I was thinking is maybe you could leave it at that Belmont service station just behind the counter and just say that someone no. shows up with an old yeah. S or whatever. Right on. Oh, uh, yeah, but uh, you know that it's it's a thing of custody. Like it's something they have to do something with yeah. and yeah. and make sure it comes back. And, and what's to say it? The person it'll, accidentally it'll, didn't it'll return it. People, they'll 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 do the yeah. whole. You know, I, I plugged it into a Model Three and it doesn't work. It's useless. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. the other and the other key catch with it is it's limited to fifty kilowatts anyway. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, that's Chatamo. That that was the original Chatamo standard, uh, um, which I think only now has gone up to a hundred kilowatts, perhaps, or something. Yeah. Or was One, it? I wonder if we can influence them to put dual CCS charges in from here on, rather than yeah. the. It, it'd be great because I mean, it's. I would be surprised if ABB would charge them any more to supply dual CCS head yeah. rather than one of each. Um, it's basically oh. the same. Yeah, I, I think Ampo was was poorly advised. That's all. That it was just assumed. Let's put one of each because then you cover all bases. But it's a. It's a void standard. It's. In New Zealand, our our cousins across the ditch, uh, they have mandated CCS for all imported cars. Yeah. That is their mandated charging system is CCS. Well, and no, mm -hmm. currently imported cars come with the Chatamo. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, what, I wonder what the, wonder what the statistics in Perth of number of Chatamos versus number of CCS. It must be pretty small. Yes. And yeah. Eva might know. Yeah. The um. Yeah. The, the, there's probably, I guess, about fifty to hundred still knocking about, but the the the, the there are quite recent um, leafs, the forty kilowatt hour forty kilowatt hour leafs that that do still have Chatama. I mean, I can I can understand how the the twenty four kilowatt hour thirty kilowatt hour leafs might uh, might you know not not be that useful for longer longer distance traveling, so. Yep. But the, the it's really just those those leaves that have a little bit more distance, a little bit more range on them. The uh, the Outlander Bev has got a Chatamo plug. Yep. Yeah. Um, then again, it can run on petrol. So yeah. yeah. And the but, if, but if you just if you just look at that Ampole service station, they've done a great job. They've got two bays fully marked up. You know, like it's all yep. set up properly. But really, it's only good for one car. So it is. Yeah. It just doesn't, yep. doesn't make sense. I think it might be also linked to the arena money that yeah, actually funded right. it. Ah, so, yeah. that, yes. so if arena said, you know, we we're we're um ah, we're yeah. on this as long as you have both both uh, you know Ch Chatamo and CCS, then oh, okay. Um, you know, that might have been what what actually linked them to it. But I guess the thing is in the future they could just 
chop one cord off and make them both. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah, just but a, surely, the legacy surely sort of the, issue, really, isn't it? it once once the, the leaves go, then, you know, um, we'll be right. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know if they'll be putting in Chatamo for the 150s when they when they replace that charger that they've got there, the 80. Um, Sure. So, so uh, I doubt it. do you mean yeah. replace it, or do you do you mean upgrade it? Because I presume it's got uh, power yeah. modules that just slot in. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'll upgrade it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's the same. I don't. I, I think it will be uh, changed. I think, from I, think, what I, heard. I thought the ABB yeah, had the capacity up to up to one eighty. Um, so yeah. I, I think you just put extra power modules in. You, it's oh, just okay. been half half supplied, basically. Um, okay. Because that's it seems to be the new style. So the original tritiums were sort of like a a traditional switch mode big power supply with big inductors. Now it's it's effectively like PC supplies. You know, um, you can get twenty kilowatt modules very light. You know, they don't even weigh ten kilos. It, it's it's pretty good. Mm. Um, but yes, unfortunately, they really do need to get rid of Chatamo because. And it's unfortunate that there are Leafs out there and that, that Nissan are continuing to import. Well, here's a question, Ant. Uh, what about New Zealand? Presumably none of the new Leafs have Well, have I'd be Chetimo. interested to find out, but um, I haven't Point seen any seven. any Leafs that are that are CCS2 converted even. And I don't know if that's that's even happening. But maybe yeah. maybe in New Zealand the, the Leafs are are converted or they're just not coming in. Or, or are Leafs... Maybe perhaps they're not available for new purchase anyway. Maybe they're all grey imports. Uh, yeah. Well, cert certainly most of the ones that are that are, that are around are grey imports, from what I can, from what I can tell. Um, but yeah, this is still sell them until the area comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Was that uh, was that a photo of John Edwards standing next to the car the charger? Then I just saw Harold. Did you put that up? I, I didn't put it up, but I think. I put, I put that up. It was. Uh, Ken oh, can you put that back up, Ken? Oh, was it short? Ken, was... Ken's a great producer. Yeah, yeah. Ken, uh, love those okay. new the new outfits, the new merch is, is oh, really good. Um, the jacket. Oh, is that, the white, now that's the fucking two fucking handsome the, dudes uh, there. <laughs> yeah, is, that, is that the? Uh, that's the local Belmont drug team, isn't it? Just like uh, a, couple of, a couple of dealers, uh, you know. <laughs> Check the stance on it. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it looks like something yeah. from the Australian Olympic team. I like to see, uh, I like the I like the fact they've still got the spill kit here just, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> just in case it goes bad. <laughs> I've got a I've got a uh, Carol, you gotta you've got to say uh, we've got a uh, Perth Signcraft fucked up with the bonnet, eh? Look at I told them specifically that the Tesla Club's gotta be red. Yeah, right. what the logo's <laughs> got to be red. It's illegal to have it any other colour. Look what they did. Jesus like, Christ. Actually, the current mm. corporate colour is to have it sort of charcoal grey, but uh, but yeah, I'm not sure anyone's going to ping us on that. Uh, it's it's good to be there on the bonnet. Yeah, yeah, Elon, if, Elon, if you're listening, just let us off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Nah, look, it is good. Kind of, it looks good. Yeah, and and actually. Um, Ken, have you got an image of the map, of one of the tweets of the map, please, on the bonnet of, you know, mine or Pete's car? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Perth, Perth Signcraft, and that, and it's a big shout out to them, actually, because I rang John on, as in John Edwards, on Thursday, I think it was, and said, oh, you don't happen to know someone that can <laughs> do a, do a you know, a sign really quickly, and... Um, yeah, any one of those will do, Ken. Like, doesn't yeah, matter. I was just going to grab the most recent yeah. one. But, oh, uh, yeah, that's that's the probably the top. Yeah, that top one. That's it. So, oh, it's actually hard to see. It they, they actually did an outline. This was done in one day, and I had three three done on the Friday, and that's, and fitted to the hey, cars. Uh, that's a good job. That's a good job. Yeah, it was awesome. I, we did Pete's the next day on the Saturday, and and did mine on the Friday, and that was you know, the, let's call it six hours notice. So yeah, big shout out to Perth Signcraft in Malaga. Um, Sorry, once they, again, who are they again, Harold? Perth Signcraft in Malaga. Malaga, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and they did an excellent job. And also, this this segment has been sponsored to you by Artline Textures. Um, okay. Although frust I was going to say, Pete's Pete's Sharpie work, I've got to say, is better than your Sharpie work, Harold. You know, 
<laughs> I haven't seen Pete's. Like, uh, well, Pete, if, if, is Pete still awake? No, he's, still he's gone. His, uh, I think his phone died. Oh, okay, that's fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, Pete, Pete Sharpie work is so much neater than yours, mate. Look at that. It's, it's... Oh, it's a bit thin though. It's hard to. It's <laughs> so you got to do it thicker so it's easier to see. Yeah. But anyway, um, we we won't tell we won't we won't tell everyone that he lost his uh, sharpie. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes, you're gonna you're gonna kill me. And I go, why? Why am I gonna kill you, Pete? What have you done? And he goes, I lost the red. Sh I, no, I lost the blue sharpie. And I go. Pete, you've got one job to do, you know, you're, <laughs> like, because <laughs> I, because I gave him, I, I bought four, you know, two of each color, and I gave him two, you know, one of each color, and said, yeah. do this, don't lose it, and he lost one, he lost the blue one, but not I think he must that, have. Not only that, Harold, but he actually mixed up the colors as well on his latest tweet in Fitzroy. Yeah, he said, he said you were red yeah, and yeah, he was yeah. blue. <laughs> this, this, yeah. in, in this tweet that I've got on the screen, he's got it wrong. He says blue line for him and, uh, and red line for Harold. But, um, it's, but a, it's a hard slog. He's up there. It's doing it tough. It was no 40 degrees. Yeah, yeah, he's he's staying, 40, in, he's staying in the back of his car. It's 40 degrees. He's not it's in the good. honeymoon suite like Harold yeah. is. He's he muffin. He's, 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 he's out there with the snakes and the crocodiles. <laughs> and he didn't and have bad. he didn't put his aircon on, so it was pretty hot for him, which yeah, is something I militantly yeah. refuse to do. I, I will always drive. I'll prefer to drive a little bit slower, but in comfort, because oh. you know, time goes very slowly if you're if you're overheated. Yeah. Yeah. But um Yes, but having said that, I did go across some a couple of sections. Well, one section of the other ball with the aircon sort of mostly off, and the seat heaters on because it. Actually, that's something I, I did learn. Um, I think there might be a resistive heater, which I didn't know about in the Model Y and probably Model Threes, because I saw on Scan My Tesla there was something called PTC, well, heat basically. And obviously that's a resistive heater because PTC stands for positive temperature coefficient thingy. Um, so that was quite surprising. But um, yeah, so there were a couple of places where, you know, if anything, heating is the one that costs you a bit more energy than cooling. Cooling is very cheap. And if you're doing 100 k's an hour, you might as well just slow down a little bit so you can make it. Until Synergy finishes their highway, in which case you want, you're not going to care because you're just going to go flat out um and it's going to be all awesome harold um what time are you setting off tomorrow morning starting to get a bit concerned here yes rather early uh i usually try to leave about an hour before sunrise before you know official sunrise because obviously it gets light a lot earlier than sunrise um so yeah i'm gonna i'm probably gonna have to punch out shortly but what i'll do is i'll i think i can do this i'll end and let's have a little look. I won't end the meeting, but I'll leave the. I'll stop recording, which will then mean I, it'll convert. I won't do it. Apologies, Damon. When you see this on YouTube, um, it'll be probably deep into tomorrow because I'm not going to do the processing tonight. I'm going to go straight to bed. But um, yeah, what I'll do shortly is just stop recording, and then I'll leave. Ken, I might assign host to you or something like that. I think because it, it wants you to assign the host to someone, so, um, and then you fine. guys, and then you guys can chat on. But what will go to YouTube is just what's been recorded, you know, um, as the main part. But yeah, I'm, I'm obviously yeah. If, if you guys want to rock on, um, because uh, like Chuck, um, I'm into future, and it's well, it's ten to twelve. So I've got to get up probably at about five o'clock or something like that. Actually, Chuck, when does the sun get up? Is it? I think it's about ten, ten to seven it's or no, six thirty. Does it does depend? Harold, Harold, Harold it's Jared? actually ten to one. <laughs> it's, it's, 10, it's ten to one, Harold. No, it's not ten to one. It's twenty three forty nine. My what? My thing says so. Um, uh, oh my, oh, gun the guy. He thinks at a time, mate. <laughs> Three hours in front. Six thirty, sun, six thirty sunrise in Gundagai. Yeah, oh. uh, six. Uh, well, here it's a uh, local time at six twenty-seven. Well, so six, yeah, I, six thirty. I mean, yeah, cool. You're in Melbourne, right? No, I'm in Gundagai. Oh, 
He's in Gundagai. Oh, oh, okay. he's, he's he's still three hours. He's still three hours. Three hours in in South Australia and finished it in New South Wales and just nipped oh. through Victoria as if it wasn't there. <laughs> That's yeah, it. And I missed, I, and I missed the, the welcome to Victoria sign because it was just somewhere on the air highway or whatever it was and it just, yeah. just missed it. Um, and I didn't notice going out of Victoria into New South Wales either. There's no big hoo-ha unless, of course, there's a hard – oh, no, that's at Wodonga, Albury, Wodonga. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even see the bridge that I crossed. It was just – yeah, whatever. It's just a blur. Absolutely. Cool. All righty. Well, I think on that note, for all the YouTubers, and thank you for watching, um, I might end this show, the recorded section, and then let everyone else rock on. Um, before I do that, I might just uh, – actually, I will end it. So um, I'd normally uh, – two seconds. I'd normally ask Pete how he likes to round out the show. Uh, um, with, and it, with it, Pete said he'd like a nice uh, warm <clears throat> bed and a nice warm shower. That's what Pete That's said. Yeah. Have you got one? Uh, me, oh. I haven't had one yet, but I'm going. I'm about to have one, um, which will be great just to wash off all the new car smell, which I must admit is pretty awesome too, because it's. Um, <laughs> I haven't had new car smell for ages. Uh, it's quite delicious. Um, as you would know, John, because you've got a new car and a couple yes. of others. Great. Um, it's very nice. Let me just uh, – here we go. Um, i just got to get this. So Pete, Pete would normally oh. – the way he normally rounds out the show is stay safe, stay sustainable, and stay ahead of the curve. And the way I would end it is – and the best way to do that is – buy a Tesla, join Tokwa, and ask us anything about accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. And on that note, I'm going to bid everyone... Sweet oh. dreams, sweet electric dreams, Harold. I, <laughs> it's, it's kind of electric nightmares, but I'm going to, I'm going to bid everyone uh, uh, good night.